one and all. Hello. Hello. Good to be back. Yes. Hey, everybody. Matthew's here. Hi, hi to Matthew. Hi to Matthew back. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Guys, I, I missed you. Host. And you guys are here as always. And it's so fun to be here talking with Tom Goldrup, Jim Goldrup. Talking with Tom and Jim, you guys, I'm going to start listing off all your things like I do. You are um, uh, actors and writers. Uh, you're film historians. You've written four books on the golden age of Hollywood. Uh, and um, you are slowly becoming experts in both Mary Beth Hughes and the uh, uh, No Mobile. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I still got to see No Mobile. <laughs> now I got to see No Mobile. Yeah. I, uh, and well, the world problems. Problems. A bunch of us on the show just get together and we finally watch the No Mobile. Uh, I think that, that would make yeah. Dan's life. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but the other thing that you guys are that Matthew doesn't know yet, we're going to be having so much fun today. We're going to be, we were talking about Star Trek the past couple weeks and uh, and we're probably going to be talking about Star Trek again. And I want to um, specifically talk about one episode of Sp Star Trek, which you guys are definitely knowledgeable about, about. Knowledgeable about. And there's a reason. Spectra of the Gun, uh, which is a season three episode of Star Trek that deals with the Earps and the Clantons at the OK Corral. And the reason why you guys know so much about this is because the Clantons are our kinfolk. Our grandmother, when we used to watch the old Wyatt Earp TV series with Hugh O'Brien, she would come by and point at the TV and say, he's no good. Remember, you're a Clanton. Her mom um, is a Clanton. Our so, great, yeah, uh, our great, great grandfather was second cousin to Ike and Billy Clanton who were there at the OK Garo. What? Yeah, that, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, oh my third great goodness. grandfather was first cousin to old, old, old man Clanton, uh, the father of the Ike and Billy. Uh, oh. They're our kinfolk, and we've done we, we've done a lot of research, and and no film has ever portrayed it the way it was. I think the most accurate one was uh, Spectre of the Gun on Star Trek. They wore white hats. They yeah. were they they all were shady characters. It was like there's like one, one guy who saw what. The gunfighter was going to be starting uh, from a window. His father said, "Hey, that's going to be cold-blooded murder." And the son said, "Don't get into involved with it, Dad." He said, "There's just a bunch of stage uh, stage robbers having a falling out." Yeah, because the uh, the cowboys in the OK Corral they had their hands raised when the other side when, when, when the Europe opened fire. Oh wow! Wow! That, that's the beginning that, of the gun. That's why uh, Kirk and Bones and those people did not want to be the Clantons inspector of the gun. They were on the wrong side of the gun. And 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 <laughs> and two of the four cowboys were unarmed. Yeah, two of them, two of them were already unarmed. Oh, yeah. man. And the Europe's knew it. And the Europe's knew it, yeah. Sort of talk uh, execution. That. That's an execution. An execution yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. someone uh, uh, mentioned in Virgil Earp as he was going down there to the corral. Uh, there's something about arresting them. Uh, and uh, he said, I have no intention of arresting you. Now, it all started because of a stagecoach robbery that the Clans knew something about that uh, Doc Holliday was, Doc involved. was involved in it. And uh, a, a friend of Wider, who was a uh, undercover, Wells Fargo uh, uh, undercover agent. No, who was a Wells Fargo uh, uh, guy would, would, oh, that would, guy. would tip off which stage is carrying how much money. Morgan oh. Earp. Wanted to ride shotgun that the, the night of the robbery, and Bob Paul, who was a uh, undercover well, agent for uh, Fargo. Uh, Rose Fargo, said, "No, you're not. I am." And so, when the outlaws came up to rob the stage, the uh, the stage driver to before that had changed places for some reason. He had cramps. He had cramps with the uh, shotgun guard. Shotgun guard, and so the outlaws rode up. They thought the stage robber. Was the shotgun guard or Bob Paul, the uh, Wells Fargo agent, uh, and they shot him. And so, uh, uh, the, the, the guns knew about it, and then and it, there was a whole. There was a whole beginning. That was the whole thing. beginning, and it was a whole thing like a ball exactly. Action. Who's telling the truth sometimes, and who's not? I think you know both sides. Uh, but um, it was, in, yeah, I would like to have been. And there. this has been part of your family history, and you knew about this growing up. 
that this we knew was about when we were kids, uh, but we didn't know exactly how they were related. We knew our great grandmother was a Clanton, but we didn't know exactly what the connection was until, and that got us interested in chasing our family until history. The 70s, we started in the chasing, 1970s, we started to chase our yeah. family history, and then we found out. Look at the court records. Look at the trial. In the trial, Water was brought to trial along with well, the, the Europe and the dog holiday uh, for the, the murder. And uh, uh, why Earp, the, the judge was a friend of a friend and a business partner of Wider. Wider, yeah. And uh, Wider Earp had a carefully prepared written testimony that he read. And, and he couldn't be cross-examined. He couldn't be cross-examined. And uh, the, the, uh, the prosecutors, you know, objected. But... but there's a whole interesting story there. Yeah. Uh, we have ah. a over 100 pages of history written up about that, that we, and you guys you guys have that written down uh somewhere right. yourselves or uh yeah yeah if you'd be interested uh we could send you a copy we sent jeff and yeah, then an email it's, it's and long. He, through an email it's long it's uh, yes, but, yeah. uh, absolutely please send it to me i would I, read that it's about uh, well, pages. what i wrote up is the story of newman clinton that's old man clinton uh, his family and his family and yeah. so i tell tell about you know, you know the kids of the family, and uh, interspersed with it comes uh, Johnny Ringo, who's also some relation, yeah. and another outlaw friend of the Clintons, who was Joe Hill, is also another relation, and so we kind of intermingle them. So it's on oh, the story, and I, and I tell about the Herbs and Holiday, and maybe maybe that's why we love Western so much. It's our favorite genre. I mean, it's our family history. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine so, right? You feel right. So, at so home. you can give us your email address after, and we'll. Yeah, I won't say it online here because I'll get too many emails yeah. from all. <laughs> yeah. So with Spectra of the Gun, um, the plot of that was that this alien race to punish Kirk and the crew um, put them in this old West world, and everyone in the town believes that they're the Clantons. Uh, and so the the herbs say meet us at five or, or get out of town at five or we're going to have a showdown or whatever um but i'm guessing none of that is very accurate but the characters in star trek they know their fate because they know there's no way they're going to win the fight because it has to be repeated as history had it where they lose the fight that part of history is right they lose the fight Right. I mean, oh, I Clanton survived, uh, but the other Billy Clanton and their two friends, the McLowry brothers, didn't. They got killed. Uh, so they're they're in a situation where they can't get out of it, and you know, in the in Star Trek, and they have to be going through this, and they're trying to figure a way to stop it from happening as it gets closer and closer and closer to high noon or whatever. You know. Right. Right. The um, what I thought was fascinating about the episode was. And I, I looked into this to be sure of my opinion was truth, and it is. Uh, it was they didn't have the money to build a west a, a, a western town, so they just made the fronts of and pieces of buildings, um, which is fascinating. But it gave the whole thing this, this eerie fe feeling, mm. you know, because yeah. they were just set pieces sitting in the desert. Right, it fit, it fit better that way than having a regular town. I, mean, I think it's so, but it was not out of necessity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And sometimes those budget cuts really actually enhance the film because you're like, oh, it's super scary now because you could tell it's a manufactured environment and that it's a stage that's set and it's going to play out, right? If there's a real Western town, you would think, oh, maybe there's a chance of like, finding a weapon under the counter or something like that no 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 this is fully controlled environment way more terrifying yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oof. gives me chills wow yeah. i i'm i'm amazed i i i'm thrilled uh, just selfishly that i've acted across from you guys knowing your heritage now just gives me like a taste like like oh i'm I have a tangential relationship now to that too. Like the closest the roses that ever got to any sort of historical fame was that uh, the roses were coming across with the Donner, Donner party. Oh, really? Uh, oh. Yeah. We were part of the Donner party, but oh, it was wow. too cold for us. So we turned around and went back and waited for summer and came over in summer. 
Mike. Uh, they were smart. They were smart. Yeah, they were yeah. smart. Yes. Yeah. We were smart, wimpy. We didn't have. To <laughs> <laughs> I love how you put it. Just, <laughs> but it was too cold for us. It was a little chilly for us. I'm, even now, I'm like, oh, it's like 74 degrees in here. Jeez. Yeah, it's part of my part of my heritage. So you weren't here for this, but I did this several times without realizing it. And so obviously when we're talking and everything and when the, when the episode gets edited together, th those can be very far apart uh, time-wise. And so uh, I didn't re realize that I'd done this like three times uh, until I went to go edit and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did. Oh my gosh, I did it again. Oh, I did it a third time. And the third time I did it, I said it and Jim started laughing. And I remember being live and Jim laughing at me and me just moving on because I didn't understand why he was laughing. We're not really part of the Bunny Hill Boys. Yeah, I said they were yeah. clampish. Wrong family. Wrong family. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, instead of Clanton, I said clampets. The clampets. <laughs> and didn't notice, didn't correct myself. And Jim started busted up <laughs> and they looked at each other and they just let me keep going. Sure, of course they did. They're so I had to come back and apologize to them and say on air that they're not Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the Beverly Hillbillies reference comes from. I get that now. No, you guys are not Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> Although if you find some oil, let me know because we can we can use some. <laughs> 